Aloha out there. I know you guys are all sitting at home, locked away, and you just couldn't wait for this episode of Security Matters to stream to you live out of the Think Tech Hawaii studio. So I hope you're joining us today. Uh, my guest today is no stranger to this industry, and I'm sure probably not a stranger to most of you. Pierre Borgex um, is uh, brilliant by almost every measure, and uh, we've had some great conversations, and I wanted to get a conversation today, get an episode going around what our industry sort of done right and what are we still doing wrong around this whole idea of convergence? You know, we've talked about it for many years and uh, I don't think we're, I don't think many have really started down the path, to be honest with you. Uh, Pierre, welcome to the show, man. I really appreciate you taking some time out to join me. I know you're a busy guy writing and I don't know if you're traveling much these days, but maybe you're getting some Hello. writing done. Aloha. Aloha. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, you, you and I have, have talked uh, quite a bit about, about this, the problem and let's, well, I'll, I'll keep it, we'll start it simple and try to keep it around people processes and, and then maybe we'll beat up on products a little bit uh, if, if we have time. Um, on the people side, you know, we started with awareness and education, I think four or five years ago at PSA. And I know C is working hard to put together a, uh, a package for integrator education, for, for technician education around um, cybersecurity. But on the whole, um, I, I, I feel that we haven't moved the needle much um, with, with people. What, what's your take on it, man? You, you're on the main a lot more than I am. You know, I'm kind of isolated out here on my little rock. So tell me what you, what do you see? You know, what are people gravitating to? What's, what's, what's good? And then we'll we'll talk about what's lacking. Well, I think I think generally, the industry has progressed maybe about five percent. It should, uh, and on a hundred percent scale, you're five percent not there. I think that people think they are, uh, based upon a lot of the conversations that have taken place. Um, I think manufacturers maybe have have. You know, secured cameras, they've added OSDP, they've done certain things, which which I commend to a certain degree. However, uh, when we talk about people, and, and that uh, inevitably becomes the big problem, is most integrators, even consultants, design engineers, have not taken the time to educate themselves on the true problem of, of IT infrastructure security uh, and cybersecurity as a whole. What is cybersecurity? What is IT security? What does IT infrastructure really mean to the security and to the physical security industry from video cameras, access control to sensor to fire, et cetera? I think the, what it boils down to is that, um, like most people in life, you know, we're all looking for the easy answer, you know, that old easy button. Mm -hmm. There is no Button. It takes time and effort. <laughs> you have to learn. You have to research. Um, spending your time to define, you know, what is, you know, the what is what? How does IT infrastructure play in the role of uh, designing a security, uh, you know, camera system? You know, what does that mean? Uh, what does segmentation really mean to the to the business? What type of business are you working with? You know, are you asking the right questions? And I think we've talked about this, right? I think the problem is that I don't typically see us asking the right questions. Um, you know, we talked about this three, over four years ago um, at, at Consult, I think when it first started, it could have been three years ago. Yeah. You know, and, and, and Greg Norman brought in uh, the concept of, you know, how, well, you know, IT security, physical security, right? The assessment side, what is your current state? How do you define it? Well, now it's even operational technology. So it's got three domains now mm -hmm. that we still don't know what we're doing. Uh, and, and it's because we just don't want to learn. It, it, that's a, I hate to tell you, but it's laziness. It's pure laziness. It's, you know, mm -hmm. they, they had, they've had it good for, you know, the, the integrators are doing extremely well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of business. Well, of course, now we have coronavirus and now we're going to see a slowdown and the economy is going to slow down and then we're going to have a big robust, you know, return. So, I guess I've given you a little bit of good and a lot of, well, we got a lot to work on. I, um, well, we, we talked about laziness and I, I, do you think that our success as an industry 
is a contributor to the the lack of further education? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I think that we've okay. gone through so many years of 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 good, right? It's hard to like come back mm. to an integrator and say you you need to do this, and they're looking at their balance sheet and go, well, you know, I'm doing pretty good. I'm going, I get it. You're not going to deny that, um, and I can't deny that. I can't even deny that to consultants because mm -hmm. consultants are busy. The the checkbox assessments mm -hmm. are raging, and you know the 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 design engineering is well, you know, off the shelf, and they're good. I think, unfortunately, is that. Mm -hmm. You're, you're going to reach a wall where technology is going to surpass the, the, the people's capability of positioning solutions there or designing the proper solutions because technology is going to afford mm. people to be more nimble, more edge based, much more, you know, less, less fixed to, the, to, the, to the, the, the panels on the wall than to the cloud infrastructure that they, be, they, they were not paying mm -hmm. attention to. Hmm. That's an, that's an interesting point. Do you think that that has a potential to devalue what it is that we do? Do you think they'll always need us at the door or will it just be an electronic lock set that you can get at Lowe's and, you know, um, well, and that you hit the nail on the head. I wrote an article that really, you know, typified that just recently about the integrator, you know, and, you know, are they going to be the integrator of tomorrow? Um, or simply an installer of uh, parts and pieces. You mm -hmm. know, the value for the integrator is to be, you know, part of the trusted value to the, to the client, right? Um, so to should be the consultant and the, inevitably the design engineer. Um, that means you've got to make an effort to actually create that value. Um, and unfortunately, many times what ends up happening is, um, you know, they say, well, it's not in my scope. I shouldn't be asking those questions. Mm. I, I, I don't want to do that. Mm. Or it'll interfere with the mm -hmm. sale of that product, right? Oh, God, I don't want to talk yeah. about that because it's going to confuse the, the, the end user and we're going to end up not getting the deal closed this quarter. Look, I, I get it. I, I, you know, I completely understand it. But unfortunately, who are you serving? Mm. Are you serving the client or are you serving yourself? And nine yeah. times out of ten, yeah. frankly, they're serving themselves. Because here's the problem. I get the triage. I get the problem after the fact. And I get people who are mm. frankly upset that why didn't somebody tell us that? It says, well, you know, mm. I don't want to say that, well, they should have, but the reality is they should have. Um, and unfortunately, the reason mm -hmm. why they don't is A, they didn't know. So I don't blame them there because they didn't educate themselves. Well, I do, but anyway, nobody's listening to that. <laughs> Second, um, <laughs> they should be more honest um, as honest to the client in regards to what they should be doing. And frankly, unfortunately, and I'm going to say it in front of everyone is look, you're not, you, you're a Honeywell shop. You sell Honeywell. You're a Linnell shop. You're selling Linnell. You're not going to sell anything else. Mm -hmm. And frankly, mm -hmm. if you do value the, the maturity of your client and you understand what level of maturity they're in and what industry they're in and what they need, and sometimes that's the shoe that doesn't fit. Maybe you have to give them something mm -hmm. that is different. But unfortunately, if the integrator is making that decision, well, they're not going to tell them the other side mm -hmm. of the story sometimes. And that's that's a danger, mm -hmm. right? And especially when things are beginning to, to get more edge-based and we see much more nimble systems, you know, compression at the edge, you know, security. I mean, we've got a lot of things going on right now that, that – that sure. make systems much more um, resilient over time, you know, future proofing. Okay. And it doesn't incorporate sure. old technology. So, you know, you got to watch out. That's all I got to say. You got to watch out. If, um, do you, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty passionate about na national security and our, and our, our the place I want our industry to be in it. Um, do you find a great awareness for the guidance that's given to across the sectors, the NIP sectors? Um, uh, RM, you know, we have a new risk management framework that came out last year, you know, RMF2 after having RMF1 for what, 20 years. Um, mm -hmm. the, the guidance is there. It's written, uh, it's, it's well written, I think, in fact, and it's quite detailed on, on the things that we ought to be, the discussion we should be having with our customers prior to designing anything. Do you think much of that's happening uh, with that as its basis of, 
uh, guidance or is it, is it just, okay, this guy knows how to make the equipment work. So we'll trust what he says. Well, so here's the thing. Converge gap assessments in regards to the understanding of every environment, IT, OT, physical security, when I say I, I, you know, information technology, operational technology, physical security, is when you're doing a converged assessment, you're asking questions uh, in regards to resilience. You're asking questions based on operations. You're getting into the nitty gritty of how you're going to support your systems and what is the most appropriate systems that you require. You're gonna ask what their IT infrastructure lo looks like. You're gonna ask where their IDFs and MDFs are if it's in their, in their infrastructure. You're gonna ask all the right questions if you do this converged assessment. And I, I can tell you right now that Ben Butchko, you know, I've been working with him closely. We're, we're really yeah. tied at the hip right now on a lot of projects. You know, and his, his resilience model and his concept, um, you know, we, we followed that in IT world and in the, in the cyber world, and we're matching those up to, to really help clients. And, and I think where that comes to is most consultants have an opportunity to do that too. Um, that doesn't mean, you know, yeah. you, you know, a consultant can't do that. They sure can. not But here's the point. You know, have you, have you read those standards? Have you applied the concepts yes. of those standards? Do you understand that these have been written for 15, 20 years? I mean, just ICAM and FICAM, for God's sakes, it's just, it's real simple, right? Yeah. You know, sure. learn about identity, learn about access, permission sets. You know, if you really are deploying an access control across an, an enterprise environment, you know, understand, you know, what are the, what, what is, what is a kill chain to cyber is, as a kill chain to, to, to physical, you know? Operationally, yeah. what what are the things that are, that are not going to be supported if something goes wrong, like say a pandemic? You know, working from home, seventy percent of your of your force now is there. Did you did you have this in your coup plan, your con continuity of operation plan? That was written years ago by the, the federal government to to support you know companies uh, you know out of uh, FISMA and out of uh, 9/11. I mean, look, you know. Shame on us if we're not doing these things to help our clients. And that means the consultant has to become better, has to become more, um, you know, unified in regards to understanding that, you know, even though it's not in your scope, and don't get me wrong, I get it, you're not getting paid for some of this stuff. But frankly, if you're not asking the questions, I don't think you'll ever get paid for it. That is a great point. And I, I, I definitely see the sentiment on the on that consulting side and then the integrator is sort of just left to deliver whatever's been drawn up and that's his job. Um, good food for thought right there. Let's take a break. This is a good spot, I think. And uh, we'll pay some bills and we'll be back with Pierre Borges in about one minute. Rusty Kamori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. I feature a wide range of amazing guests who share valuable insights about how going beyond the lines leads to success in everything you do in life. I'm looking forward to you joining me every Monday at 11 a.m. Aloha. Hey, Aloha, welcome back to Security Matters. I am online today with Pierre Borgex. We are both sequestered in our caves, but we are getting the information out as quickly as we can about what's wrong and what's right with the convergence that our security industry has been working on. Um, we were talking about people and with, without, I'll go there anyway, don't be lazy. There's a lot to learn and don't stop learning it. That's what needs to happen on the people side of the house, period, end of sentence. Um, with processes, um, 
Pierre, I know you're a, you're a, have a great expertise in the OT as well as the IT and obviously the physical side. What are the process problems that that give you the most pause? The the process pieces that aren't part of spec that that aren't getting brought up to the clients either by the integrator or the consultant. Um, what's wrong with with that piece of our puzzle? So I think I think one of the biggest challenges for our entire industry is the fact that um, we are we are looking at, at, at more multi-purposing of systems than we've ever seen before. Meaning corporations as well as government agencies are looking at operational environments, their controls basically, and trying to ensure security, trying to ensure protection. But what happens is that we have this disconnect between you know, by even IT as well as physical security, not recognizing that how this is affecting operational environments from pipeline security. Uh, I mean, the GAO report from, from a year ago basically defined how unsecure their pipeline infrastructure was. And, you know, much of the budget was relying on, you know, the, the substation side and not really the pipeline side. And so PLCs were unprotected, SCADA controls were unprotected. So what happens is that, you know, the domain of security is everything today. It's no longer segmented to a silo. And, and I, I hate to tell people, but, but if you don't correlate those environments, you're leaving your behind unprotected. And, you know, I tell you something that last thing you need is an ambush. And that's what we got today. I mean, yeah. We've got um, you know, nation states hacking our infrastructure. They're going after the crown jewels through through that operational environment. Um, you know, listen, ransomware is 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 being used against cities of like New Orleans and and Mar and Baltimore, Maryland, and those are tied directly to operational environments, meaning use of the technology that we're adapting to either be access control or video and, and, and linking that information directly to a, say a flat network that we should have been saying, guys, you can't put this on the, the, the network because you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna end up of having vulnerabilities. And this basically lies in wait for the, the tiers of, of businesses that are small and mid cap that really feel like, well, I'm too small and I'm not a problem. Let me tell you something. If you're working for a large agency, okay, a government agency or a large enterprise, you are the problem. Inevitably, what you're gonna find is people will be able to use you as the agent of, you know, unfortunate attacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not that difficult. The, the, on the process side, I, I read, uh, I saw the recent GAO report about just access control and, and FISMA, you know, rollout across the Fed, which has been right. very, very slow. You know, it's, I think, 20 years mm -hmm. and, and the findings are still terrible. Like 15% of the stuff's covered adequately or whatever. And now we have OSDP, right. so we need to go back and retool anyway. But anyway, um, on the process side, is, is it your experience that, that the customer because the customer doesn't know his risk or, you know, his greatest risk, he doesn't have a, a risk matrix built that the consultants and the integrators are afraid to get engaged with, with that discussion because the, the customer really doesn't know the answer either. And, and as you know, it's, it's a whole lot of work to sit down and take someone through a full blown risk assessment, you know, enterprise ER, ERA or whatever it is. Um, what, what do you, what do you, what's your sense of the integrators in their, um, we've already talked about maybe they're lazy or they lack lacking some responsibility there, but is it is it because that process is is also daunting to the customer that we don't want to bring it up? Oh, totally, totally. It gets in the way. I mean, you know, unfortunately, mm -hmm. there's no way to make it simple. I, I, I told you this initially is that yeah. we've got to try to make it simpler for them, and and I think that inevitably that's you know our job. Um, you know, as educators and people that 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 really want to improve our industry, we're going to have to try to make that those that information more available to the uh, integrator, and as well as the consultant. And the consultant's responsible. The, the consultant's responsibility is to understand what risk means today versus what it meant ten years ago. Our focus has always been. 
uh, one dimensional approach. We are now a multi dimensional approach to risk. It incorporates many different vectors. And if we don't understand that as a consultant, then what we do is we fall short of the ex of the required expectations to get to the proper technology. And that's where we, we, we have to ensure that there's a, there's a roadmap. Um, I, I believe strongly that we're, we're moving into a world today that, that doesn't allow the consultant to be, um, uh, you know, third party and navigator. They're going to have to be part of the equation. Mm. And I don't think that's a comfortable place to be yeah. in for most of them. That means they're going to have to learn about technology. Mm. That means they're going to have to be more adept at, at how to define what a good roadmap means for a client for technologically as well as operationally. So, you know, I'm not saying that, that consultants in general do a poor job, but they don't do a good enough job now. And I think that that's where we're failing. I mean, IT went through that, um, you know, the, the mad rush back in the 90s and in the, in the early 2000s, mid 2000s, you know, I mean, my God, you, you, had, a, you had a whole slew of consultants. And, you know, after 9-11, you started seeing cyber consultants, right? And, and you had a whole slew of those by 2005, 2006. So when the guys realize, well, wait a minute, you've got to create value. You have to really final, finalize, you know, what is the expectation roadmap of the client to get them to a desired state they can reach. And that's the hard part. That's where, where, where consultants are today. And that's where the integrators have to take on that because they're going to have mm. to basically take what the, the, new, the new brand consultant in the converged world is, is giving them and be able to apply technology mm -hmm. to that and install it appropriately, configure it appropriately, program it appropriately, software is, you know, infrastructure, not hardware infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, yeah. not on-premise infrastructure. And it's a hard, it comes, it goes from the, the, the edge device all the way to the storage. It's it no longer is as easy as I used to have plug and play. <laughs> the, um, is, do you think it would behoove consultants and integrators both to, to get really specific knowledge in a certain sector instead of trying to go out there and sort of be everything to everyone? Because it is a lot to learn. You know, you and I, it's yeah. tens of thousands of pages if you really want to understand what, what should yeah. drive your discussions from a national security perspective anyway. Um, it's, you know, for tier one, tier two facilities and, and on down, you know, they're all they're all important. Um, is, is that something, would that be a good thing you think if, are, are, are we all just too cocky and you know, we want to be the smartest guy in the room so we don't want to partner up with with other subject matter experts oh, in, in certain sectors? I'm oh, not sure what that problem no, that's is. It. I think you're right on target. I mean, look, it, it, it's ego is the, the biggest problem facing most industries, but the security industry is full of ego. And, and, it, and it's always been that way. Uh, okay. I mean, I hate to tell you, you know, okay. the guy with the gun, the, the intelligence officer, the, the, the you know, the, listen, it's just, it's a natural transition. And I, you know, listen, we, we have to call, we have to call our baby ugly sometimes to get to the real issue. You know, you, if you, you keep on talking yeah. about how great it is, you never find what the, what the problem is. And, you know, maybe that's why I write some of the mm. articles that I write. You know, it's to, it's to awaken us out of our symbiosis that, you know, or the, some form of, a, of, of, of sleep re, um, retardation that we're in sometimes. We got to get out of that. And, and mm -hmm. now we're in a position where we don't have a choice. So, yeah, with, with systems becoming more intelligent with machine learning and, and, and you know, cognitive, synthetic cognition or like AI, whatever you want to call it, you know, this is what's, what's going to be driving, you know, the, 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 the industry very soon, you know, and, and we are, and the client is getting more intelligent about that. They're beginning to understand this. IT is coming to them and saying, why aren't we doing it this way? And I can tell you right now, the, the, the industry as it is, is stymied by the fact that technology is surpassing our capabilities. And if we get to a point where we try to put everything in our own box, well, that box is gonna get crushed by the, by the sheer mm. weight of the nimbleness of te technology in, into the near future. And that's where you have to be worried because if you're not ready for that tidal wave, 
um, you're going to get crushed by the effect. Yeah, I 100% agree. I I hope it's a must. And I mean, we work hard to raise the raise the level of our industry, and I, I want us to have a place at the table in national security. I want us to be a part of that solution. I, but but we will have to continue to gain extra expertise. Um, we're going to have to push ourselves, or or we will get pushed aside. I crushed in a box. I, however it happens, it's going to happen. I, I agree with you 100%. Love that perspective. Well, we got a minute, a minute and a half left. Um, Final thoughts, sir. What's the what's the challenge you would throw out to the industry to go get it right? So I think my challenge for the industry today is we must we must not only challenge ourselves in regards to learning and adapting to the technologies of tomorrow, but understand how they apply to the businesses um, requirements, meaning not just thinking about technology as a patch, as a bandage, but as a process within their business. You know, it, it's not all about us, it's about them. And I know we always want to say that, but yeah. we never really buy it. I mean, I, I've, I've heard many people say that, but I, I just don't see it sometimes. And, and I'm gonna tell you right now that invariably you will be the witness, you will be the victim, and you will end up holding the bag if you're not doing what's right. Yeah, as an industry, we are, our industry above all is, is one that's designed to serve others. So please, please get out there, get, get yourself familiar with this documentation that's available, have the difficult discussion, work on risk with your customer first before you get some, some technology into them that, that's, you know, maybe partially serves their needs, but really doesn't do everything it's supposed to. Pierre, I really appreciate the conversation today, man. Stay safe over there. And everybody out in the audience, stay safe. We'll be back next week. I might even have Ben. Ben's coming on soon. It might be next week. I'm not sure. But um, anyway, Pierre, we'll talk again soon, sir. And uh, all y'all take care out there. Aloha. Take care. Oh.